Hello folks, my name is Matt Peterson. I'm a trainer here at Pragmatic Works where I do everything from virtual mentoring to on-demand learning to hackathons to live private trainings. Uh, and you are at our YouTube channel. If you have not subscribed to this YouTube channel, now is the time to do it because we put out at least two to three videos every week covering from Power BI, Azure, Power Apps, Power Automate. So if you wanna be up to date on all the newest videos we put out, make sure you hit subscribe at this point. So here's what I wanna do for this week's Power BI video for you, is I wanna talk about the difference between related uh, and related table. This was something that came up in one of my VM sessions over this past uh, week. Uh, and so I thought this would be a great opportunity to uh, put this out there and explain the difference between the two. So basically the difference is gonna be with when we use the related DAX function, we're gonna pull back just one value based on our relationships between our tables, as opposed to related table, which is gonna bring back a table for our, our expression, and then we're gonna do something with that table itself. And so I wanna show you two use case scenarios of, of how we can kind of understand this and when you might need to use it. Uh, and so the data that I'm going to use, we're getting close to the, the baseball playoffs coming up. So I just made some quick dummy data uh, for some baseball stuff just to take a look at. So without any further ado, let's head over to the report, take a look at how we can figure out the difference between related and related table. So as you can see, we're doing related versus related table here, and I have some data tables where I've got an all player stats table, which simply just has the player IDs. It currently has their all time batting average. I have another table that has uh, home run derby stats, another table that has player salaries, and then finally another table that has the seasons with the team. And so on our all player stats, let's say we had the request that we wanted to return how long these players had been with uh, their respective teams. How many seasons were they there? Now, what we could do in order to get this calculated column put onto this table is I would come on over to all player stats, I'm gonna do a right click, and I'm gonna hit that I want to make a new column. And so what I wanna do at this point is I'm gonna make the DAX form just a little bit larger here, and I'm going to give this column a very simple name of just seasons with the team. So I'm gonna come over here, say this is gonna be our seasons with team. And the problem is, is that the seasons with the team is over in this seasons with team table. So how do I bring it over into this table? Well, this is where we would use the related function, which is gonna use any active relationships that we have within our data model. So as I start to type in the word related, and I'll tab this over, it says, I will return a related value from another table. And now this is really cool, it's with team, Gonna double click into it, close this off, and now when I hit enter, I should get the matching correspondence of each player with the seasons with team. Now how do we know if this is right? Super easy to validate. I can come over to uh, the player ID, which is Braves1, come to seasons with team table, take a look at Braves1, five, perfect. Braves2 is at two, so let's go back to all player stats, and we have two. But notice Cardinals 1, I did not have an entry of Cardinals 1, so it returns no value whatsoever. Now you might be saying, Matt, yeah, I know how to do that. Shouldn't we do that in the Power Query Editor using a, a merge? Uh, indefinitely. So the whole goal of this is I wanna show you in the video the difference between these two functions. And best practices is if you can get it done in the Power Query Editor, that's where you wanna do it. It's gonna help with your compression, your indexing, and your data refreshes but sometimes you're gonna come across a scenario where you don't wanna go back into the query editor or it's not gonna really support the data you're looking for and you wanna do it quickly on the fly, this is how you get it done using related. Uh, it just looks out to that table, brings back based on the relationship. So how did it even know how to bring that back? Well, we can actually look at that. So if I come on over here to the model view and let me get rid of all of these, and I look at my all player stats table and my seasons with team table, there is a relationship based on player ID. So that is the relationship it is looking at. So when it goes to run this formula for row number one, it's going to use the Braves one player ID and look at Braves one player ID on the seasons with team and pull back the column that I told it to bring back. Now, if I had 18 more columns on here, I could say bring back any one of those 18 different columns. So that's where you're related is. Think of it as like a lookup function. Now, the other formula that we have is the related table. So let's say on this all player stats, I'm trying to consolidate all of this information. 
I want to get how many total home runs all of these players have had during the home run derby. Well, my problem here is in my home run derby stats, that's where all that information is. So Braves won in 2015, had 14 home runs. Then in 2018, they had one. Well, I want to consolidate that and say, oh, and also seven in 2019. I want to have all of those numbers summed up on my all player stats table. Well, you might be thinking, easy, right? Let's just go to all player stats. Let's put in a new column. So let's put in a new column here. And I'm going to call this my uh, all time home run derby stats. So all time home run derby. And then we might just say, well, let's just do the, the sum. So if I say I want to do the sum, and we know that it is in our home run derby stats, home runs table, our home run derby stats table, the home runs columns, so I'll double click this and close it out and I hit enter. Ah, we're getting 102. What in the world? Well, this is what's called row context. So when we evaluate these DAX calculated columns, row context comes into play. And so what it's simply doing is for every single row, it's going to the home run derby stats table and summing up all of the home runs. It is not using any kind of filter on it. It's just simply doing what we told it to do. And if we go to the home run derby stats and if we add these numbers up, it does give us that 102 number. So we need to tell Power BI that we want to use a relationship here. We want just the home run derby for Braves 1, and then for Braves 2, and then for Braves 3, so on and so forth. So we're going to have to modify this formula. And the way that we're going to modify this is I'm going to get rid of it to start off with. We're going to build it from scratch, and we're going to use the related table function. Now, related table is going to use our relationship based on our models. Let's go take a look at our relationship uh, in the model view here. And between player stats and our home run derby stats table, our relationship again is based on player ID. And if I double click on this, it will tell us exactly here. This is done on player ID. Great. So let me come on over here and I'm going to say, all right, let's use that relationship. That's why I love the function formula that they've given this in DAX related and related table. It's letting you know we're going to use those relationships between the tables you are calling out to because we're really reaching out and talking to another table at this point. So I'm going to come over here and say, all right, let's go with related table. A related table says it will return all the related tables that have been filtered down on our relationship. And so I want to reach out to the home run derby stats table and close this off. Now, if I hit enter here, we're going to get an error because it says, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, the expression you just wrote refers to multiple columns because this brings back an entire table of data. We can't put a whole table within a column. So now we have to say, okay, we got the table. What do we now want to do with that table? Well, essentially what I'm trying to do is once that table has been returned, which is currently going to be filtered down for my first row on Braves 1, I want to go row by row by row of that filter down table, and I want you to add up all the numbers in that home run column for me. And that's what it's going to do. It's called an iterator function at this point. So here we go. So in front of related table, once we have that, we have it to use, we're going to put the sum x function in front of it. And the sum x function will iterate over every single row that is returned. It will grab all the numbers in our specific column that we want to reference. And then at the end, once it grabs them all, boom, it will sum them up. So I have related table, sum x related table. Now all I have to do is say, with this table that has been returned, what expression, what column am I looking at? Which in our case are the home runs. And so I'll close this off. And now I've got the home runs. And now we need, let's see, do we need more parentheses? It looks good to go. And yeah, we're good. Braves 1, 22 home runs. Braves 2, 21. Again, quick validation. If I come on over into my home run derby stats, if I filter this down just to Braves 1, because that's essentially what's going on here. It's filtering down the table and returning it. This is the table that was returned for row 1. It then selected each of these numbers from the column that we told it to. It puts them in the background, and then at the end, because we put sum x, it added all of them up for us, and it gave us 22, which is pretty great. Now we're able to get information from another table and add it into our all-player stats table. 
And we wouldn't be limited to just doing sum x. We could do things like find the average of them. So with related table, you're going to bring back an entire table. You can do something with that number. Related is just going to bring you back one value whatsoever. And then we could go even further. And let's just say we wanted to, um, let's say we just wanted to rank all of our, our players based on their, let's say we wanted to do it based on their average uh, salary. Okay, so let's see what, what of these players had the highest average salary. Well, we could bring back an average X column here to bring back the average salary for each player, but we don't have to do that. We can wrap it into a full DAX formula if we want to. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to come up here. We're going to add another new column and I'm going to say, let's rank by average salary. And so the first thing we would need to do here again is I would need to use a rank function. Now, again, I'm going to be ranking over an entire table. So this is why I would have to use the rank X function. And so we're going to say, okay, well, what table are we uh, trying to rank on? Well, if we think about it, we want to rank on this entire table here itself, my all player stats table. You might be saying, wait, Matt, we don't even have um, any information on this table yet about this uh, average salary. That's okay. It's going to come in with the rest of this formula. So I'm going to say, let's go look over all of our player stats table. So look at all of this table for every row, and then we need to reference something within it. Here again, though, I don't currently have the average salaries. So let's get that expression. So I'm going to go down to a new line. Let's get that expression returned for us. So just like we did the sum x function, here I'm going to do the average x function. So in order to get the average of my salaries, I need to reach out to that salaries table. So I'm going to say here again, we've got to go with related table because the salaries are in a completely different table. So we're going to go reach out to the player salaries table. And then what column do I want to find the average on? I want to find it on their salary. So on the player table, player salaries, find that salary, bring it in, bring it in. All right. So let me hit enter. Now we have our rankings here. So it looks like Braves 5 is going to be the highest ranking. It might be saying, well, how can I validate this? Because I didn't bring in the actual average X. Well, we could bring that in now if we wanted to for validation, or we could just go strictly over to the table itself. But you know what? Let's just bring in that column so it's quicker to modify and, and update this and see those results. So what I'm going to do, this would not have been required. But see, this is where when you can wrap functions within functions, it is nice because you're not putting more data in. You're only bringing in what you want for a column. So I'm only doing this for validation purposes. So I'm going to say this is the average salaries. And if I can spell it right here. So again, I would use an average X function. So I need to look at all of that salaries table. But again, it's not the current table. It's another table, which is why I have to use related table. And it's going to be my player salaries table. And then it's going to be that salary column. And then let me close that off. And let's see if the rankings were correct. So for Braves 5, 1, $10 million for the average salary. Looks right. This doesn't even have any salaries for Cardinals 1, which is why it's at the seventh place. So these are matching up picture perfect. Because what Average X is doing again, it's going to our player salaries table. And for example, for Braves 5, which I think was our biggest one, it filters it down just to Braves 5. It brings these values back and then it adds all five of these together, then divides by five and it gives us our average salary. So this is where if we need to bring in extra information onto one table, it depends on what you're trying to do. If you only want to bring in one value, you're using that related function. If you want to bring in multiple values and do something with that information, then you're going to go with related table. Uh, so hopefully this helps kind of explain the difference between related and related table. Again, caution here, not caution, but if you can get any of this executed in the Power Query Editor, that's always where you want to go. But sometimes you can't. And let's think about this one more way. What I could now do, now that I have this information on this table, I could start to put some logical expressions on here. And I could start to rank my players um, on maybe salaries saying if they're a low salary, average salary, or high salary by using an if statement or using a switch statement. 
So again, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope if you were ever having any issues between related and related table, that was something when I was first learning Power BI, uh, didn't come quite naturally to me. Uh, so hopefully this has explained it. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, now's a great time to do it. Like the video, leave comments below as well. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.